thank you very much for having us on site today, uh, Joe. It's, it's a pleasure. Can you firstly just tell our audience a little bit about you, your company and the kind of components that you manufacture? Yes, yeah, so um, my name's Joe. My company is um, Rigger Precision Engineers Limited. Um, we're based in Newmarket. Um, it's just a small outfit. It's just me at the moment. Um, specialise in um, low volume, high precision CNC mill components mainly. I'm quite impressed with this investment that you've made. You know, I've, I've, I've visited many companies over the years, well established uh, engineering companies that haven't got this kind of equipment. Why did you invest in such a, an innovative work holding solution for, for your free axis uh, machine? Um, well, one of the things I was looking at when thinking about purchasing it was because I work on my own, I want the machine to do as much as it can without me having to attend to it. So um, with this sort of solution, it allows me to do side ops, um, extra deburring and that kind of thing without me having to reload a component or set up another operation. So adjacent side milling, six yep. op work. Yep. So that's fully achievable. Yep. Now, tell me about the actual microlock and, and the flexibility of it. I see that you've got it set up either side um, of, of the grid plate. Can you explain how it works and how it gives you that flexibility dependent on the work that comes in? Yeah, sure. So, um, I mean, the way it's orientated at the moment, you can treat that as, as if you were doing regular three axis milling. But then say you've got some side holes, which is really common on jobs. Um, you can tilt the table over 90 degrees and then you can put the side holes in. Now, if you add a larger component that effectively was the size of the trunnion, how would you set up for that? So, if I had a larger component, because it's all modular, um, I would move the fixed jaw and then I could move the um, clamping jaws um, to whatever arrangement best held the workpiece basically. So effectively you could do small parts, large parts, two op parts, just profile or six op. Yeah, exactly. Now, when, when purchasing a brand new machine like you have done, and it's a very nice machine by the way, how important is the correct work holding solution? I think it's enormously important um, because you, you, it allows you to get so much more out of the machine and maximise its capabilities. Um, if you just put one vice in the centre of the bed, then there's only so much you can do and you're going to be loading the machine all the time. Whereas if you have a setup like this, all right, you've got to invest in it, but it's going to free you up a lot more or your operators up a lot more to um, go and do other jobs. Ultimately, it's increasing the efficiency in your workshop. Yeah. Um, but it's also maximising, like, as you mentioned, the capabilities of your machine tool. So you can run the spindle at its full speed, the feeds and speeds, you haven't got to back them off because of vibration. How accurate and repeatable is it? Um, so far, um, I, am, I think it's incredibly accurate. Um, when I set this job up, I've, obviously the components aren't in the machine at the moment, but I set the datums on one face after clocking it all straight and true. Um, and they were exactly the same once it was rotated around onto the back face and all I did was copy the offsets over. So repeatability is a given, accuracy and uh, clamping force? Yeah, um, I haven't noticed any deviation with clamping um, and clamping force wise I was only holding on two and a half mil on the bottom of these billets and I was able to rough it at over nine metres a minute. So brilliant testament and just finally just to wrap up really are there any limitations to this work holding solution or do you feel like you've made the right choice? If there are limitations I haven't found them yet.